Well, from the outside, it didn't look too bad, but then when I opened the door, nothing left. She was 88 years old. She lived here over 60 years, and, and she was just basically walking through a, a house that would just two by fours, there's no, no walls, and just reminiscing about where things were and everything that got thrown out. She was worried that she couldn't, she, would, uh, she wouldn't live long enough to get back in her house, and it just broke my heart. I had a lecture on tearing it down, and I gave it a thought. I'm 89, come on. <laughs> well, I live to enjoy it, but I couldn't give up on it. We just started with insulation, helping, helping her grandson with insulation and uh, doing sheetrock. And um, just kept praying that God would send teams that could, that could do, have the skills to do it. Can't believe it that people are doing all this for someone else. They just don't understand why people would stop everything, leave their families, leave their jobs, and, and come out to help complete strangers. And that has been so moving to them. And then, of course, we get to tell them that it's, it's the Holy Spirit that moves in us, and it's the heart of Jesus Christ that he has given us that we give to others. You know, we know that Romans 8, 28 tells us that God uses all things for good. And even in a disaster situation, it's not that God causes these disasters, but he uses it to, 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 to mobilize the body of Christ to come out and, and to be that salt and that light in the community. I probably couldn't have gotten this far without all the help. It's been a big blessing. Nelson was living upstairs, no heat, no hot water. Uh, but he didn't want to leave his home. A lot of people are afraid that the homes are going to get looted. And so now you have the father here, the mother somewhere else with the kids. And, you know, our heart went out to that and we wanted to get them reunited back in their home. October 29th, we decided to stay. And by 8 o'clock, I guess there was over a foot of water in the house already. I probably never prayed so much in my life that day. We got out. We came back the next morning. The water had receded, but it was just completely muddy and uh, everything was wet. We didn't know where to start. I stayed because my kids never want to leave. My wife didn't want to leave. And then I ended up getting help from uh, volunteers. And we said, well, at least this is, this is working. It's, we're, we're seeing some hope. Every time a team comes and adds another nail or another molding, it's, it's just a great joy. I mean, we're, we're as joyful as they are because we see the joy in them and we see how they're getting excited about the home just coming back together again. Memorial Day and Labor Day, the whole complex would get together and we would have big cookouts and it was just a fun place to be. In our case here, at the, uh, where we're helping with uh, Corinne's home, uh, nothing has even been started yet. The water came up, and this was all, this all broke up. The 28th of this month will be six months in a one-room motel. I'm just looking forward to getting back here. There's still people sleeping on cots in friends' basements or at parents' house or at their children's home if it's an older couple. Um, there's still people that have been eating out breakfast, lunch, and dinner for six months. It's amazing how, how vast the destruction is here and um, how much rebuilding is left to do. I don't even know what would be happening to these communities if it wasn't for the influx of volunteers coming through. We're so thankful that the Lord has put it on people's, people's hearts to come out and serve. In the very beginning, I was thinking, I, 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 I didn't actually ask the question that, are you guys getting paid somehow? And my answer was, we don't do this for money. We don't do this for, we, we just want to help. And we do it because the guy upstairs, so that's, that's really powerful. These angels are like unbelievable. I just can't say enough wonderful things about them. I didn't know that there were people like this. We believe that, that Jesus calls us to, 
to go out and to share his love and um, gives us an amazing opportunity uh, and privilege to, to, in essence, be his hands and his feet. Which has been one of our prayers that, you know, we would always be those ambassadors of Christ and that fragrance of Christ to everyone that we would work with so that they would see Christ. And I thank everybody for helping. Never could have done it without you. Seeing the finished product now, I mean, it can only be God. It can only be, because I couldn't have done it on my own. And we showed up, and God did the rest. I have the memories. What I lost was just stuff. Well, the promise in, in uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 13, that God will never give us more than than we are able to handle. When you are in the midst of the hardship and the tragedy, it's very understandably difficult to, to believe that sometimes, but there, uh, there is hope. There's nothing, nothing bigger than God. There is no wave that can come in. Literally here it was waves of water, but we have waves coming, crashing into our lives often for some folks, um, and that none of that is, is bigger than God. To me, things happen that are not nice, that this is something nice that did happen.